It's in our nature to fail from time to time. However, with every mistake, an individual must have the right mindset to ultimately learn and grow from that failure. Most of the time, we get so caught up with these trivial mistakes that we often forget the true value of what they have to offer. One such moment was a time my soccer team and I had gone to the city playoffs in 2008. I had been playing soccer for about three years before, but it was the first year that my team had made it this far. I remember the big smiles we had on our faces when we heard the shocking news from our coach. It was as if every one of my dreams and nightmares were blended into one. I was ecstatic to have made it this far, but the thought of letting my team down churned the inside of my stomach. This was such a big deal, and we only had one month to practice before the game day approached. During our first week, despite the rain and cold, our coach made us run mile after mile and play game after game to help our bodies adapt to the constant running. During our second week of practice, we worked on our goalkeeping and did push-ups and sit-ups to help develop muscles all over our bodies. Week 3 consisted of learning to play defense and team collaboration, and week 4 was simply a review of the past weeks. Since I was a team's captain, it was tough to keep everything in balance. I constantly had to juggle my goalie keeping with being amiable to my other teammates. I had to work 10 times harder than any of my other teammates, whether it was staying an hour or two late after practice or spending my weekends at the park practicing with my brother causing me to constantly come home with new bruises for my already growing collection. The weekend of the playoffs was cold and foggy. The weather perfectly depicted the mood I was in as I walked onto the field. My team and the other team have come so drastically far and now we are face to face competing for first place. The buzzer for the initiation of the final quarter of the game rang. My team and the rivals were both tied. I recall running across the field when out of the corner of my eye, I saw my team's best player and my good friend, Arcelli, get kicked in the stomach. I should not have been there to help her. What kind of friend was I? She fell to the ground in agonizing pain and tears rolled down her face as the ambulance arrived. When the game resumed, I felt the heat of resentment resonating around us. After Arcelli's injury, I no longer had faith in my team. I wanted to throw in the towel, wave my white flag, and not continue this tournament any longer. It was at this time that my teammates approached me and said, Amanda, we have to win this, not for us, but for our Arcelli. They were right. I needed to step up as captain and be selfless for the team. I needed to win this championship for everyone but myself. With minutes left, I was determined to stop the rival's ball from entering my goal, but I was wrong. The player shot a strong kick and I lost control. I dove for the ball, but missed it. Tears started to swell in my eyes as I heard the cheers of the opposing team, because as captain, it was my duty to win it for our Arcelli. Disappointment and frustration erupted inside as we lined up next to the opposing team, reciting, good game, good game, triggering an important question, was the game all about winning? My team had held around me to assure me that although we lost, we want something greater, our friendship. It is true, we were simply small valley kids who had a dream to march onto the field and be undefeatable, but nevertheless, we did succeed. Soccer was more than just a game. It was an insight into the darkest and lightest chambers of my soul. I was granted with losing something that meant so much to me, but at the same time, I was also granted with an undeniable bond between my teammates. As the sun bloomed overhead and the foggy mist disintegrated, I walked hand in hand with my teammates through our car and left with a huge smile on my face.